The new Sonic movie's here. But no matter how good it is, it will never live up to Sonic at his absolute prime. This is his absolute prime. Welcome back everyone to the cutscene series, where we dissect the very best of video game cutscenes, as they too are getting just as cinematic as real cinema. Today we're covering a scene that has kept with me for many years. It's the opening introduction to Sonic Unleashed. I mean, this is just the toppest of tiers. I don't think Sonic will ever top this sequence right here, but let's get into it. We start with a simple fade in on Earth, the calm before the storm as we are introduced to our villain. The music interrupting the piece with an orchestral cacophony in one of the best renditions of Dr. Eggman's themes we've ever heard. <laughs> You hear Eggman before you see him, the great Mike Pollock, looking and sounding so crispy and an evil laugh fitting for such a cartoon character. All of this shot being built to demonstrate the scale of this set, as we see Eggman twist into view at a low camera angle, bolstering him up whilst keeping him dramatic. And now the camera zooms and fades to the other end of the ship. Like a super zoom, Sonic silhouetted against the fire first, icon before character. He's designed with shapes in mind after all, and the music changes to a build-up. We all know what's coming. Damn he's shiny! With a dramatic turn of the camera, we still don't see his face, but his other features first. As he looks at the distant goal. Kinda looking like that one level from Sonic Heroes. It's a gameplay adaptation. But first, his hurdle is... Again, giving us a kind of camera zoom for that handheld, rushed and energetic feel to see those super shiny robots. And in universe, they give them some low angle lighting. Very evil. A classic technique. Before pulling back to reveal more robots in the foreground. Again, to show scale as a miniature surprise reveal. And though this is a pretty functional shot, thematically this acts to tell us a bit about these two characters. We can see that Sonic is viewed as a real threat needing so much firepower, and this Eggman knows, implying the history between them. And Eggman again being as cartoony and physical as possible. And so they do, shown as a side angle on the right, shooting left as villains tend to do. And Sonic here's just looking good, the music kicking into gear in sync with the action. So simple. God, don't you miss the days when Sonic levels did the same? Anyway, he's so fast he jumps ahead of the camera and into that juxtaposing side angle, running to the right just like the games. And he's got that squash and stretch, an animation technique that demonstrates motion that Sonic for some reason has often been quite rejective of. His face being so horizontal to really show that forward momentum. Again, focusing on his features, all equally as iconic from his design. And since this isn't a 2D game, he can swerve on the Z axis from distant to up close. Truly swift. But we don't lose track of him thanks to that color palette. Him being the only blue on top of an orange backing means you're always able to track him with your eyes as their opposites on the color wheel. And the camera pans to his next pathing. A Sonic that the camera can't keep up with is so dynamic, it almost seems like a no-brainer. And so Sonic next shows off his new and improved spin jump attack, camera following behind him almost like a perspective shot before swinging around to the other side, like a half rotation of fluidity compared to where Sonic first started. <laughs> And then, a brief moment of calm. It's the cool, radical skater shot Sonic's kept along with. In this moment, he's enjoying it. This is child's play to him. And he's laid on top of the twinkling space like a festival firework show. A beautiful conscious decision someone made anyway. And now we follow back to his run. Camera dashing ahead, but low to the ground to highlight all that added speed. Ooh, the adrenaline. And then BAM! Our first slow-mo shot. The fast speed is great for dynamics, but now after some distance we're getting close up. And again, that super shiny lighting is to die for. Lens flare in the background and all, and a clear indication of what's going on. All with a flare of violin in the music. The robot's slowly punching downwards. It's a single dodged attack, but super close to hitting as well. Also, I personally like that Sonic is also in slow-mo here. He's still going fast, he hasn't just frozen time, we're just able to actually perceive it properly for once. Though of course, I still love those classic Quicksilver scenes the movie was influenced off. I guess it really is the difference between more modern, western cinematic inspirations and the eastern approach covered by the animators here. 
as this short was produced by Maza Studios, a Japanese animation company. They work on all the later Sonic game cutscenes. And with these as the end result, you can probably see why. But then we come to a mid shot, now at normal speed. Sonic a blue blur, but easy to navigate thanks to his trail. And the camera also spinning around the robot in the opposite direction to Sonic, albeit only slightly. We get that sense of being equally as disorientated as the robot, and yet the shot is also very followable, balanced to a perfect degree. <laughs> and just as quickly leaving the robot in the dust. Not even destroying it, Sonic was literally just playing with him. All it does back there is fall over. And now he's speeding along through all the others, destroying them with barely an effort. His hurdle isn't actually the robots, it's the distance. But this is all great for entertainment and especially momentum. Literally just running through creating explosions at this point. This is business mode. We're now circling right around again a full 360 from the start and the camera is left in the dust as Sonic trajects away from us, completing the final thread that is this sequence. Only scraps remain as he shrinks in the distance. This was all a collection of small sequences spliced together with one central motif. The camera doing a full spin as Sonic closes the distance, as well as a toward and away shot. All since that has been one big one of a shot. Easier to do with animation, sure, and with plausible hidden cuts tucked in there too, but it still makes it a great set of cinematography. And that's just this scene. The cutscene continues. And with all that, it's finally time for a proper cut. A robot from the sky, clearly a noteworthy opponent. And it is. We briefly and clearly see Eggman within it, impossibly up front to the camera. Another helping hand of animation there. And immediately in the same shot, contributing to the action with Eggman's mech swinging around his arm into a machine gun and the camera swinging back with the action now that he's established. Eggman shoots the floor recklessly, willing to destroy anything to get Sonic, as well as giving us a trail of explosions to ogle over and guide our eyes over the frame for the next bit. Cut to Sonic, effortlessly hopping over these explosions we just witnessed, not losing any momentum, coming out of his spin ball to express some focus, silhouetting in front of the next explosion and jumping high and out of the frame. A skill level beyond this bump of a hurdle. And Eggman 2 looking stunned upwards. Even he is still stunned by Sonic's ability. Not necessarily because Sonic has gotten better, but more likely because this is a cartoon and Eggman is meant to be beaten. Underestimating Sonic for that easy loss. You little... As for Sonic's actual attack, he starts by spinning in place close to the camera so we get a moment to help us see what's happening, with Eggman's teeny tiny mech in the distance looking so insignificant, followed by a brief first person shot to know what it really feels like to be Eggman, I guess. And then we follow Sonic again, in bull form, bouncing underneath the robo before running up the wall. The camera follows. We see Eggman cartoonishly turn, the camera pulling back to reveal all the more missiles. Same technique as the first bots earlier, which promptly fire off. Camera continuing to follow right up close to the camera, like a great 3D glasses effect even swerving in front of the lens. Cut to Sonic's mid-shot expression. For the first time, we see his thoughts. Turning behind himself as the first real threat comes his way, though his response is pretty simple, go faster. Really stretching his face as the air pushes along him. Eggman is in full assault mode now, just firing indiscriminately upwards towards the hedgehog. And with Sonic running along the ceiling at this moment, we get to see the missiles following along from this further pulled back over the shoulder shot of Eggman's robot aiming across the frame. Camera swerving overhead as Sonic improvs his own loop-de-loop -loop essentially. But Eggman stays on target. And now we're right up in the action. Explosions right on top of Sonic. It's very intense as it feels so close. Sonic stops and jumps over, squashing and stretching at every opportunity. The camera then stops so Sonic can run into the distance once again. Only a handful of missiles remain and explosions obscure our view. Camera shaking with each boom for added effect. Sonic has escaped the audience and in turn Eggman as a hurdle. Sonic never kills him, just his inventions or knocks them down sometimes. Always been a support of organic life one way or another. Oh, except 
We get a close up on Eggman's missile launchers again, just so we can track them easily as they assimilate into hands. Not just a cool battle, but also playing with the cool concepts for robot designs. This is entirely original to the cutscene. It's not in-game anywhere, though I guess it kind of is like the Egg Dragoon, but not really. Just pure, unadulterated creativity with this robot. Pulling back for a sec so our eyes can adjust before shooting past the camera and into the distance we last saw Sonic. And now we get the opposite shot. Another hallway at some undetermined distance away. Missile still flying as Sonic runs more freely. Look at his lanky strides. No longer in business mode, he feels he's won. And it tells a lot about his character. That smile on the side of his head says it all. And then the hand comes flying out from the mess, genuinely terrifying how well it swarms, right on pace, but pauses just in place for clarity. And Sonic is caught off guard. For once, expressing concerns, the battle is turning. Very briefly, because it is. Being swooped up, obscuring all the blue from the shot. Sonic actively losing? Talk about drama! And just as quickly, Sonic is yoinked back down the hallway impossibly fast, with us seeing some of the mechanics of Eggman's work. It's a simple towing system. For the mechanics in the audience who want to see some realism, I guess. Before guiding our eyes back to Sonic's resting place, and Eggman holding a victorious fist. By the way, covering cutscenes is a new thing on the channel, so I'm open to suggestions on our Discord. It's also our hub world to all our other formats, like how I've been streaming every day this year. Here's our April schedule lineup. Or you can check out all of these. The first step, of course, is checking if you're subbed, if you haven't already. The action stopped, and it's a face-to-face, -face, and over the shoulder. The music now stripping down to just basic drums and a single flute. But the camera zooms through the glass and up to Sonic. Still no dialogue exchange this whole time, mind you. Sonic struggles, smiles, and uses the suddenly appearing Chaos Emeralds, a great Deus Ex Machina that makes sense in universe. And it surprises audiences who wouldn't have had the knowledge that he actually possesses these just yet. Eggman gets his high quality reaction shot and Super Sonic explodes onto the screen. And in anticipation, the camera pulls away preemptively to get that wide angle shot. Eggman's hands attempt to grip the new glowing lights, briefly succeeding before... <laughs> The robot mech now fully disarmed. We as the audience get a pause to take in Supersonic's new form as well as a swelling of a victory motif from the soundtrack. Before bursting through the chest of the new mech, charging out some energy before and then flying away in the distance, but circling back this time. No longer here just to get past now. Eggman of course retaliates in his cowardly ways, revealing the iconic Eggmobile. Now with blooming textures. Dismantling himself from the mech, needing a moment to calibrate the jets before zooming off into the distance. What a great little detail that is. But now in the air of hallway, Supersonic comes blazing towards the camera, giving us this close up shot with the air resistance pinging at his face again, before spinning around him and zooming just as fast down the hallway. Moving on, Eggman's accelerating through this unique hallway with tactical ring lights every so often to help identify the speed of this commute, like white lines on a marked road. And with Eggman outrunning the frame, we can focus on those lights, their doorways being shut by an emergency sequence. Only for Supersonic, of course, to come blasting through with a plume of explosions following behind him, and then zooming out to show the true scale of destruction, taking the whole damn fleet down in one fell swoop. And Supersonic effortlessly flies past the lens as we get to witness uninterrupted the place fully breaking down. Victorious orchestra in full swing. And for more explosion porn, we then get another airship, supersonic flying past as we see literal fireworks going off everywhere, and explosions continuing along the deck span. Other ships are also there, this is a fleet, firing haphazardly in Sonic's general direction as we come to a calm. A lone tower with spinning capsule pieces, our next location. A static, albeit giant one, judging by the tiny speck that Eggman has become at this point. Insignificant against this scale, way different to Supersonic, so much closer to the camera, and with a lingering golden trail to boot. Eggman now reduced to a frantic mess, his previous calculated acceleration from that last hallway now dissolved into a mad dash 
stumbling as he hits the walls on his way in. Very satisfying. Before finally ejecting him out of the thing entirely, falling beneath the frame as we see only smoke. And now we see his fall, eating the floor all the way into the background, his Eggmobile landing with a resounding thud. And in the foreground, supersonic vents. <laughs> Now a low angle on Super Sonic as he holds all the power in the scene and a zoom on this handheld shot like a spectator on the ground. Finally, it's time for dialogue. Just two guys hanging out in a room. Eggman right looking left looking up. And keeping that power, we get Sonic's point of view floating down to a groveling Eggman, stancing himself as vulnerably and apologetic as possible. Universally recognized, but distinctly a Japanese thing too, as this is Sega we're analyzing here a Japanese company. As Eggman pleads his case, we come further to the ground before Sonic's foot takes over a third of the frame, still holding all the cards, but in the composition rather than the camera angle, and his aura overlapping the remainder of the frame too. Ending on Eggman again, clasping his hands together above his head as we see more of Sonic's lower half, but still not even his face. Dramatic, but it's all cooling down as the music also comes down with Sonic to open up for the diegetic sounds of the scene, the dialogue. Really? Look, go easy on me. I'll turn over a new leaf, I swear. And Sonic responds. Really, do we actually see Super Sonic not dashing in the air? So this is actually kind of refreshing. Plus, the background view of the window out to space is also just super satisfying. There is an argument to be made here about the camera moving in this shot for no apparent reason. I remember an old video essay complaining about early Marvel movies doing this, but I don't mind it. It just looks nice to me. Even if there's not much of a purpose. There's been plenty of purpose elsewhere in this cutscene up to this point. Well, this is new. Showing remorse, Eggman? And with Sonic and his cocky ways pointing with a smirk on the side of his face, we see Eggman's expression right up close. Changing from a grovel to an evil grin as he reveals a button right in our faces and pressing it in a very over-the-top manner for that cartoony goodness. Time for more mechanical mechanics. Eggman's twist is revealed. Ending on this pullback shot as Sonic is surrounded and just as quickly halted as the camera spins around this circular device. We see the rings grip him to the center. And though Sonic has most of the frame here, he's struggling. And just like that, Eggman now regains his power physically standing up and being levitated all the further, rising above as he now receives the low angle treatment, able to give out his true evil laugh unrestricted while Sonic is completely restrained. And finishing it off further with... <laughs> some zaps. Sonic holds on, clearly in pain, but attempting to push through it. You can really see how determined he is as a hero. And this is an ungodly amount of expression work, the likes we've never seen with Sonic before. Really telling us all his thoughts and personality through his face and screams. Weakening for a moment before we pop out and Sonic loses his gold. Eggman on looking like the mad scientist he is. And an extra close up on him, content as the light flickers on his face. Here's that tower again, now positioned much less peacefully than orphalically. Revealing it's just another weapon, opening up like Eggman's space weapons tend to do. The music's back, but all evil and ominous, building. Sonic now not even given the whole frame in a pseudo-censored kind of way. We don't see the full body as it rides in pain, but in a way, not seeing some of it seems to make it worse as our imagination fills in the gaps. The Chaos Emeralds planted in the foreground orbiting Sonic to show the power is being drained away from him. And cross-cut with more mechanics unfolding. Multiple elements of Eggman's plans all coming together at once. Sonic turns towards Eggman, though it's also directly at the camera, the last piece of resistance. Also, here's that face you've seen in thumbnails years ago. Seriously, this is another one of those images that's just everywhere. It's pretty haunting. But a big W for the animation studio behind the cutscene, right? And actually, probably one of the most mature canonical story elements in a Sonic thing. Maybe. The tower has now become a skeletal gun, aimed at the nearby planet established at the start as Eggman laughs fulfilled, saying his exact feelings because this is still aimed for children. Oh, I've waited a long time for this! Evilly rubbing his hands and all before doing the biggest button press of all time. <laughs> We see the energy build on command and come blazing past the camera as it tilts to look down towards the planet. 
destructive enough to outpace the cam, and also giving us this full wide angle of the same moment. Technically, this is going back in time a tad to really sell the effect of the shot. A similar thing happens, again, in Eastern representations of fight scenes, where a hit is shown multiple times from different angles to really exaggerate it. Some more subtle than others. The hints of Eastern inspirations do continue to lurk in the background of this work. Anyway, this beam is a planet killer, gently making its way to the surface innocuously before revealing its true power and how it wipes out any clouds in a massive vicinity. And the music is almost just saddens. It's not crescendoing here. This isn't the final move. And for reference, we get our very first shot on the surface of this planet and the mahusive turbulence it's making in the ground, causing a shockwave that disperses the atmosphere? or at least drains it of its color. Though even here, I feel it's a little downplayed. The clouds aren't missing, and that gust of wind at the end? That's nothing compared to this. But anyway, our evil man is now giving a unique pseudo point of view with this close up on his glasses, reflecting his perspective of the planet in his sights as he looks on in anticipation. God, I have these long <laughs> sentences. <sighs> Back on the surface, we get a digital drone shot of a beautiful sunset as the ocean actively cracks beneath us before pulling up to show more of that scale. Magma glowing deep below the cracks and interspersed with this new liquid tentacle thing. The planet was a cage and this new creature was Eggman's true goal. And as its reach grows further from the cracks, it ends with it reaching towards that very sunset. How poetic. Also a point, it didn't have to be a sunset when this occurred, but the creators knew it would look better that way. A simple conscious decision again makes such an improvement. So of course it went with that spectacle. <sighs> Even Eggman is impressed, but just as gleeful. Look at those teeth. The scale of this monster increases, now giving us this wide shot to get a glimpse of its true size, though still not all too recognizable as a shape fully just yet. And hey, it's been a while since we've seen Sonic. This quickly became an Eggman story for a while there, and he's looking hopeless, down on his knees and all, practically gripping the floor. He looks angry. The beast now developing a kind of lanky hand that grips the planet, meanwhile Sonic 2 is gripping with his hand, his fur darkening and his gloves <laughs> no longer of use. First we see his claws and the rest of him blurred by the narrow focal length. This is what the music's truly building up to. And the beast's face has now formed into view? Maybe? It's intentionally kind of complex to view thanks to it basically being a final boss spoiler, but it's big. It has spider legs, tentacles, and hands. A real amalgamate. But just like it, we next see Sonic's face, his teeth extending into fangs, and the music reaches its real crescendo. <laughs> Sonic's theme, now in minor key. Camera pulling right out into that roaring shot, fur flowing in the non-existent wind, just as Gaia does the very same thing. Now those features I can recognize. Sonic and the monstrous dark Gaia are intrinsically linked through the cinematography. The camera pulls all the way back to give us a full view of half its body. A bright white light behind it as a lens flare effect that continues to both light and obscure it. And seemingly the beast form is frothing a tad throughout. And as an explanation, the Chaos Emeralds are shown again, drained of all color. Shown to us earlier to be a reference point for this moment. And they too fall to the ground as we see Sonic's Werehog stage first from behind panting out of exhaustion. His shoes more spiky now, but that's more of a character design thing than cutscene. And then next as a silhouetted mystery again, we only saw him briefly before, obscuring half the frame as he's the anomaly of Eggman's resounding success. But he doesn't notice. Success! A brilliant success! We see his perspective, having Sonic in shot only briefly as he's distracted by his real goal. Looking up out the window, the camera tilting to mimic him as we now see a single piece of the planet has plucked off, and underneath, the growing magma and occasional watery tentacle. And in true kids film fashion, Eggman exposites his plans. Now I just need to harness its power. Eggman land will finally come to be! It's just a battery pack for him. He may be threatening and evil and even torturous, but he's stupid through and through. And now it's Sonic's retaliation, his new form still obscured by a dramatic pose and tactical shadows, the lighting putting in the work rather than the camera now, his eye glowing red in the dark, his voice deeper, more mature than before, and finally we see him in the light. Uh, Sonic, that's a good look for you. 
Fantastic. Honestly, this feels like one of the biggest burns I've ever heard Eggman say. It's harsh. Again, Sonic gets the dark part of the frame. Now a quarter as Eggman is the one speaking. And with one final twist, so long, friend. and a mention of friend implying that their history together is long, Sonic is shooed out the airlock, the camera following him as he grips close to the foreground, reaching with his other hand before... <laughs> He's flung into the distance, music also letting go. Another view panning with him as he scales along the tower shaft. Chaos Emeralds as well established they're still gonna be relevant from here as we get a close up of Sonic struggling and succumbing to the drop. All with one final perfect sound to cue it all off before the logo. <laughs> Damn. What an opener. That is unbelievably good. There is also one bonus shot. It's just a static shot, fully widened to show Dark Guy evaporating away and spreading across the lands. But that's more story and not too special. This scene just astounds me. Plus, starting your plot on a loss is just so enticing as you have to work your way back up. Having the power struggle constantly switch within a battle and also having it lit and choreographed so beautifully just all comes together in this wonderful mix of cinematographic art. The momentum of it all maintained, making it feel fast by being scarce with the slow-mo, showing character in the action sequences, and the music being a perfect accommodating factor to it all. Sonic 2, the movie, wishes it could be as good as this. There's a reason Marza Studios have been in charge of so many Sonic cutscenes, though to be fair, the original film did have Sonic somewhat lose right at the start, so elements are somewhat there. Perhaps the new movie will take on more similar elements this time around, with Eggman being more Eggman-y this time. Maybe he'll actually have the strength to cause an even fight some of the time, rather than being 100% tranced at every turn. But that's for us to find out when we actually see the movie. For now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.